and beautiful. But next, it was a sound like no other, and we'll show you where it all began because the Muscle Shoals sound is absolutely Alabama. We've got stories to tell, so let's get started. When Pickett came down, that was a pretty uh, very imp important moment for us. He was from Prattville, Alabama, and that kind of made it special to us. What we didn't know was that it was going to be where they came to us and, and instead of us going to them. You know what I mean? And uh, none of us predicted that. We were more of a rock and roll R&B. That's how I, I relate to it. No one could describe it exactly, and no one could have predicted the parade of musical legends who would make their way to a little studio in Muscle Shoals called Fame, or later to an even smaller one over on the Jackson Highway in Sheffield. But they did. Well, maybe one man could have predicted it. Rick Hall had a vision. In that period of time, you had uh, Rick cutting the uh, uh, the Osmonds and Mac Davis and Jerry Reed and all this, and you had uh, uh, the rhythm section cutting the uh, staple singers and, and uh, Paul Simon and, and Rod Stewart and uh, the Stones were coming in. The biggest launching point was uh, Percy. You know, when, when that record was cut, none of us had a clue that it would uh, do anything, and it became the biggest record that we were anybody around here has ever been connected with. When a man loves a woman may have been the launching point, but it was only the beginning. When we first started playing, I mean, most people, you know, were cutting their first, trying to cut their first hit. Even Aretha. I couldn't even pronounce her name. Uh, but it didn't take us but about 10 seconds after she started singing to know why we were there. They were the Muzzle Shoals rhythm section, but would become known to the world as the Swampers. Sweet Home Alabama was put out. They were, t they were immortalizing us, but nobody knew who we were or what we were. It, it didn't explain itself, you know. It took the movie to do that. Now, thanks to Muscle Shoals the movie, the world is once again making its way to this little corner of Northwest Alabama. It tells a very dramatic and compelling story. Uh, one that was swept under the rug for many years, but primarily uh, it's, a, it's a great example of what happens in Alabama and anywhere else for that matter, when people come together and bring their, their own intrinsic talent to the project. And no matter what they are or what they look like, their goal is to make the project work. And Muscle Shows is a great example of that. It's been a game changer in every facet of uh, the idea. The, uh, we have the Music Hall of Fame is open now, which it was not open before. And uh, much of that is really lays heavily on the fact that the movie has generated such a big audience. Of course, a large section of that museum is dedicated to that Muscle Shoals sound. And asked to recount a favorite session story, Jimmy Johnson tells the tale of a Paul Simon song, which the singer had almost given up on until he brought it to Jackson Highway. Loves Me Like a Rock. Just happened to be the biggest single I ever had. And we cut it in two hours. But the Muscle Shoals sound is more than history. We've got more talent in this town right now than I've ever seen it. Uh, Hannah Aldis, singer-songwriter. You've got Americana groups like Jason Isbell from this area. You know, there's this just cauldron of talent in this town right now that is bubbling over. The Muscle Shoals sound. Sometimes the guys who made that sound, like Jimmy Johnson, have a hard time describing exactly what it was. But whatever it was, it went around the world and it brought the music world here. And whatever that sound was, it is absolutely Alabama.